Well, Andrew, he's making his way back from Downing Street this morning and until normal transmission is resumed, it is my pleasure to review the papers with Charlie Whelan and Amanda Plattel. Very good morning to you Hi, both. Um, let's have a look at the headlines first. The uh, Independent on Sunday uh, does a little uh, coloured graphic of the crossover of issues between the Conservatives and uh, the Liberal Democrats this morning. Do yellow and blue really make green, they ask you, lo looking uh, particularly at the environmental issues and uh, the Sunday Telegraph says David Cameron has lined up Frank Field, the Labour MP and former minister, to be his poverty czar as uh, he places a fight against deprivation, says the paper, at the heart of the new coalition government's agenda. The Sunday Express BBC budget bloodbath is their headline this morning, might make uncomfortable reading apparently, says the paper for BBC stars and top executives who face big salary cuts and uh, the Observer. Um, Liberal Democrats uh, open rift over coalition with the Conservatives, particularly Charlie. Um, Charles Kennedy, who's written for the paper this morning with his concerns about the new coalition deal. Mm, yes, very interesting story. Uh, I was... Uh in the Highlands yesterday, came down to Hampden Park for the Scottish Cup final, fantastic atmosphere. Charlie Kennedy uh, would have been there because he's from the Highlands of Scotland and there's no doubt that all these people voted for the Liberals, they voted for Charlie Kennedy and they suddenly got a Tory government and uh, there's real concern about that. And I'm not surprised that Charlie's come out and, and said this, after all he's from the radical wing, uh, wing of, of the Liberal Party and, and I mean one funny thing was that they, they were calling uh, the Tories uh, and the Lib Dems uh, the Tofty Club up in, uh, <laughs> up in Scotland at the weekend. Now he said specifically that he didn't vote for the deal. He didn't say that he voted against it. No, but I think it, what's really interesting, Susanna, is the fact that um, that he's actually done this at all because he knows it's destabling. He, kn he knows that there's a big mm. meeting today to, um, of the Lib Dem party to discuss the deal, the coalition. And it makes you wonder, I mean, maybe maybe it's a leadership bid from Charlie Kennedy. I mean, why is he doing it? An open yeah. letter to a left-wing newspaper at this very time. Maybe he thinks like lots of people the coalition's going to last about <laughs> nine months and he's in with a chance. Well, simply expressing an opinion or are, is there always something behind Behind comments no, like this. Always, yeah, but I don't, Charlie, think, I don't think Charlie's going to come back to be leader uh, of the Liberal Democrats, to be fair to him. I mean, he comes yeah, from the, the old SDP, from the more, if you like, more radical wing of, of this party, and, and he, he clearly feels... Look, in, in Scotland, we've got all these Liberal MPs. I've got my MP, is Danny Alexander. He's in a job that they were wanted to abolish. Scottish Secretary. A, a Scottish Secretary, and uh, th there's great unease amongst Liberal but voters uh, throughout also, the country. But you also look, Charlie, at what's actually happening in all this. I mean, you've got a three three-point dip. The Telegraph's got a poll today. Three-point dip in support for the Lib Dems, and it's gone straight but to Labour. With Labor. the polls already. Straight <laughs> to Labour, I know. You know, the, the ink's hard <laughs> even dry. Um, but there's also this story about Frank Field. I think this is really interesting. Yes, it's not uh, just a Liberal Democrat Conservative coalition. Now no. there's Labour MPs involved as well. What, what is Frank Field going to be doing? Well, he's... Um, Poverty and has always been at the heart of what David Cameron's, uh, his Conservative parties. It's always been a very compassionate Conservative party, and that's what he wants to make as one of his great priorities. Now, I know, um, you, what do you think of Frank, well, I did, I did. I, See, I think he's one of the most popular politicians ever, Frank Field. I, I love him. I didn't even realise he was standing as an MP. Again. How old is he? I mean, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, I'm not, I, let's say I'm not surprised, and neither will be anybody in The Labour. last thing we, um, we should be worried about is a few people who've got a bit of experience yeah, under yeah, their yeah, belts. Yeah. Well, yeah. anyway, look. Um, OK, but, well... Sunday Mirror, um, what have they got to say about... Well, this uh, is a wonderful story about this Tory minister saying that, uh, uh, that uh, he would rather... The new schools minister, Nick Gibb, has condemned the education of tens of thousands of teachers who went to rubbish universities. Uh, the Tory MP risked a, a, a major elitism row. And what he's saying is that, uh, is that uh, all teachers should go from come Oxbridge. And I, the reason I raise that story is because when we had these uh, great discussions between the Labour, the, the Tories and the Lib Dems, I think everybody apart from Harriet was, was a, a white male mm. and every single one of them went to Oxbridge. And I find that absolutely amazing that still today it seems you've got to, to, you've be, got to go to Oxbridge. To be fair to them though, Michael Gove is one I of the... I wasn't trying to be he's, fair. He's the, he's the jewel in, in the Tory crown at the moment. And there's, he is going... I mean, he's, he's not a, an Oxbridge... I mean, he went to Oxford, Cambridge um, <laughs> afterwards. But he came to a grammar school. I mean, he's got fantastic credentials. And I think that little minister, Mr Clegg, may be, um, um, he may be looking for a little move, some job move. I you, love yeah, this Yeah, you're story. looking at this, this composite photograph this is so funny. of Nick Clegg <laughs> 
Craig and David Cameron. <laughs> Somebody's been having fun with well, it's, um, it's photo naughty. editing. It's naughty, Susanna, because, I mean, they do look alike. But um, they took the, the girl took this picture out into the street and no one could tell the difference between David Cameron and Nick Clegg. And now on the, on the <laughs> website, there's this really funny thing. We've also got, we've got Ed on later, but the Miliband brothers, um, who also look alike. And the new nickname for them is um, a composite of their name, which is Deadwood. <laughs> Yeah. Now look, it's a good job this program goes out on a Sunday morning because that means that the traffic is not bad, which means that Andrew Marr has got back Made in Made it just slightly late. Time. Hello everybody. Yeah, I was using David uh, Cameron's bicycle. I nearly got here on time. Uh, very interesting. I've just been interviewing him, of course, and on just what Amanda Platel has been talking about, the sort of the merging, as it were, between uh, Clegg and Cameron, I think very, very interesting. I think a lot of people in the Conservative Party will be very, very interested in what David Cameron has to say about that. Uh, he, you know, he is declaring himself a liberal conservative. And he's so important yeah. now, he's prime minister, he won't come into your studio to, to <laughs> unlike the previous prime minister, <laughs> unlike the previous prime minister, oh, he Charlie, used to come in here all the time. We, over. we went to Downing to Street for him as well. We went to Downing Street for him as well. We do them the courtesy from time to time. And it looks kind of nice yes, as well. It does, yeah. it? Yeah. So we're talking then about uh, the Labour leadership, uh, Charlie, yes, and, uh, um, and the Miliband brothers, the only two so far to declare that they are. Yes, standing. and uh, the Observer has a story. It says Miliband brothers fight for union votes. Uh, that, that's very interesting, being a bit of a union man myself. Uh, well, what's interesting about this election? I mean, it's not really about uh, think tanks or whatever they're called. It should really be, be about ordinary working people. And of course, the, the trade unions are going to have about three million people to be to be balloted. It's a postal ballot of all the members. Uh, it's probably the biggest vote overall that you'll get outside of a general election. And it's very, very important that we relate to you know, ordinary working men and women, not just, uh, not just the sort of think tanks and, and the Labour Party members. Yes. You may well, have covered this already. Is Ed Balls your man, do you think? What <laughs> which, way, which way are you going? Well, you know, on, which Ed? Well, we used to say, I, I used to work in the Treasury with both Ed Balls and Ed Miliband, and uh, they're both good friends of mine, and uh, we always used to say, two Eds is better than one. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't have two people leading the Labour Party both so, called Ed. That's, that's not, true, that's true. He that's is Ed. so supporting Ed, um, Ed Balls, and, but there was a story this morning saying that he was, hadn't, um, hadn't put his name up yet because he was talking to friends. We know how many friends Ed Balls has got. <laughs> he should have put his nomination Well, he's got a very good friend away. sitting on the yeah, sofa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, Who he's won't even declare for him? Ed will make... Have you been talking to him? Of course I've been talking to him talking to Ed Miliband a minute ago. Of course I've been talking to Ed Balls. He'll make a great leader of our party. But, you know, the, the reality is we're not going to rush into this. I mean, some people want a coronation. Uh, we don't. We want a contest. We went, we've got excellent candidates. We've got three or four excellent candidates. And we're going to have a long debate. And we're going to have a, a mass ballot of tens of thousands, millions of ordinary working people. You just said the word, the sentence we were waiting for, Ed, which was, he will make a great leader of the Labour Party. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably, when you make that decision as a union, quite a lot of money goes behind the person you choose. No, no, the, at the moment, uh, the, the uh, Unite the Union, uh, the political committee of the, of the union hasn't even met yet. They will be, and they will. what they want to do is consult the members widely. We're not going to decide we're going to support one candidate and another and then say vote this way, and that, it doesn't work like that. Sorry, Susan, I'm sitting here as a heckler. You <laughs> Not at all. Well, I mean, I'm... you know, I just feel like an imposter now. <laughs> oh, yes. I? Um, Amanda, you want to tend to a story in the Daily Telegraph about it, a, a travellers' oh, camp. And the, oh, and yes, this is an incredible story. We've had um, quite a lot of there's stories recently about travellers moving in on bank holiday weekends, you know, just to, um, lay, basically laying down tarmac and establishing um, settlements there. Now, this town, they had um, a set of travellers moved in, moved their caravans in. Now, the town have all got together and raised a quarter of a million pounds pounds to buy the traveller off and just to say here's the money he's made a profit of nearly 100k on what investment he put and and they're leaving it's just an incredible example of people power mm. well maybe Expensive. they could maybe they could go and stay at uh at Dorney Wood. <laughs> <laughs> There's a story in the uh, people here. It says uh, PM piles trouble. Nick Clegg is haggling over the use of the country oh. pile as his weekend pad. And uh, they say that uh, the, country the country mansions under Mr Cameron's control will be open to voluntary groups when not used for official entertaining. That's very likely, isn't it? So that, that just won't happen. But... That hasn't been sorted out yet. Who's well, going to the, have that? There's the always rows about it. I, I, I think, uh, I think uh, John Prescott had a bit of an incident there playing croquet, didn't he? <laughs> So uh, maybe yes. it's not a good idea to stay in these country houses. They certainly won't go to charities or whatever because actually these these houses have been left in trust to, to, to for government use. Mm. So they don't actually have much choice in what they do with them. Well, they could have meetings and things there. I mean, they could. Don't be so <laughs> cynical, Charlie. Look, this is a brave new dawn, as we're about to find out from our new prime minister. Indeed. It's all optimism. <laughs> and in that brave new dawn, um, you're going to lose this BA strike now, aren't you? 
Well, 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 I think there's talks, uh, I was just talking to Amanda before about this, there's hopefully talks at ACAS on, okay. on Monday and hopefully they settle it. All right. Okay. Um, Charlie and Amanda, thank you very much indeed. You're a star. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> thank thank you to my you too. Place. <laughs> <laughs> now.